There's been a breakthrough in biomedical science. US scientists have succeeded in altering the genes of a human embryo to correct disease-causing mutations. Researchers collaborated with South Korean scientists to use a technique that is capable of trimming away a target DNA sequence and replacing it with new stretches of DNA. Well, Sheldon Kribsky is a bioethicist at Tufts University and he joins us now from Boston. We'll talk about the ethics in just a moment, but first of all, how significant is this? How likely is it that we could one day uh, see inherited diseases being wiped out entirely? Well, first of all, it is a, is a significant breakthrough uh, that has been building for several years and the Chinese have started to do this work as well. And they had a, a similar experiment that wasn't quite as successful as this. So it, it, it is considered to be a, a major breakthrough. Uh, the next question has to do with, is this going to be used for human reproduction? And that's uh, very questionable at this, at this point. Uh, because we've had for 35 years a boundary between genetically engineering what are called somatic cells or the ordinary cells of, of a person and the germ cells, that's the embryos and the eggs and the sperm. And that boundary exists and has existed for a good reason. People were concerned that once you start the process of modifying the germ cells and making heritable changes in future generations, there's no uh, stopping. You don't know where it's going to stop. And there's a lot of concern about the, you know, the movement toward a eugenic society. So why do you say, though, that it's questionable whether we'll ever see it uh, used in human embryos? Presumably, there are a lot of people who would want to see it because there are these dreadful diseases that, that they'd want to be rid yeah. of. Well. In the current situation, any of these diseases can be eliminated in an in a offspring by using pre-implantation genetic selection. So you have a few eggs, and then you have the sperm fertilizing it, and then you select out any of the eggs that do not have the particular disease gene. And even in this experiment that was done um, in a U.S. laboratory, uh, you could have used pre-implantation genetic selection to select out the disease and the healthy um, uh, embryo. Uh, so the question is, so when, under what circumstances would you have the, as the only alternative to use this method? But now that the technology and the science exists, how difficult might it be to regulate? I'm thinking particularly across borders. Well, of course, it's always difficult to regulate uh, in autonomous nations. We already have over two dozen nations that have passed resolutions or laws against germline genetic modification, that is mod uh, genetically modifying the embryo. Uh, the United States do, does not have a, an explicit comprehensive law about that, but we cannot in this country use public funds to do the kinds of things that were done in this breakthrough experiment. That is, we have a law that says that public funds cannot be used for genetically modifying an embryo. So we have two kinds of systems of ethics, one for public money and one for private money. And this isn't the best situation uh, to be in. OK, so briefly then, if you would, if the laws don't allow this sort of thing to, to be used, why do this research at all? Well, the research itself can be very helpful in understanding uh, the way disease genes operate and function and uh, how, uh, what changes uh, take place when you try to change the disease gene and whether you can change the gene by and uh, not alter any other parts of the cell. There's a lot of basic science that can be learned by doing work on embryos. And I certainly am in favor of science preceding its work on embryos. Where I draw the line is in taking the genetically modified embryo and turning it into an offspring, uh, creating a child. 
I think uh, a lot of okay. bioethicists have to uh, be concerned about this. Okay, Sheldon Krimsky, thank you.